SIMS has been around for 25 years. They deliver industry-driven, research-based, innovation management solutions. So the objectives we're trying to achieve with the social media plan are here. Primarily, we want to assist SIMS uh, in their efforts to grow membership, as well as strengthen their relationships with uh, existing members already. Currently, SIMS has taken the right first step to enter the social media world. In addition to the official website, they have a Facebook group, a Twitter account, as well as a LinkedIn group. The issue that we see is the lack of integration between the social media tools. For instance, here we've got a screenshot of the um, homepage of the SIMS website. And taking into account our recommendation, we hope it would look something more like having a tab to direct you to a SIMS blog. Again, having another one. There'd be a nice space that aggregates and links to all the other social media sites. And then the flip side of that, of course, is that on those other social media sites, they would all sort of be linked to each other as well. So on uh, Facebook fan page, you'd have a link to the YouTube, SIMS YouTube channel. Uh, the Twitter account with uh, Twitter updates would feed into the Facebook update and so forth. Integration is the theme here, and it's these three social platforms that we really want to focus on, YouTube, Facebook, and WordPress. They're all recognized as the best platforms within their uh, genre. So YouTube as a video, Facebook as a social, and WordPress as a blogging. Um, we feel like the integration of these three and and crossing that over to the main website of Sims would really do a lot to boost traffic. To talk more about YouTube, which is the focus of our project and kind of the, the pride and joy of what we've done over this semester, lights, camera, action. So Sims had a had a fall 2009 meeting where all of its corporate sponsors uh, organized and came together to discuss innovation and what was going on and we pounced on it and we met up at a uh, sponsor's dinner and we interviewed as just as many executives as we could and we took all of that raw footage edited it and produced video vignettes we created a YouTube channel and posted all the videos. So here's the, the brand new Sims News Events and Updates channel, uh, giving Sims a presence on YouTube. Joining me is Paul Muggy, director of the Scent yeah. Challenge within Innovation Management right now. Uh, the primary challenge, uh, and I mean this in all sincerity, is uh, most top managers, uh, as I was in IBM, are more focused on bottom line results. Uh, they're completely uh, preoccupied with uh, managing those financial results on a quarterly basis. Uh, few have taken the time uh, and the energy, frankly, uh, to focus on innovation, and yet even fewer know that it can be uh, managed. And once we help them understand that, uh, we find these firms, like our guests here tonight, to be much more successful. To speak about the integration, really important part, we've already kind of begun. And so this links right back to Sim's main webpage. And hopefully in the very near future, Sim's will be able to link to this channel. Um, but as you can see, uh, you know, we have all our stats here. Um, anyone who subscribes, uh, they'll, they'll get a message sent to them whenever a new video shows up. So we are very excited about this. So to talk more about the metrics, Christine is going to take it away. Uh, actually, a good point is that a lot of the metrics we, we're going to talk about are visible here, where you can see qualitative and quantitative measures that you don't have to be a, a technical person to assess. So you can see Obviously, there's a lot of content already installed. It tells you how many views there are when it was uploaded. And you also see that um, people can rate your videos. So the more ratings you have, the higher you'll rank in search results as well. So that's something that you want to try to improve as well. 
So just more about the results. Uh, we broke it down into quantitative and qualitative. Many of the quantitative measures are going to be things that actually give you a um, give you a number or a volume that you can keep track of, that you have a baseline where you can say, okay, on this day we launched the YouTube channel. How many views do we have? Maybe one. And it was probably yourself. But over time, you're going to accumulate more views, more friends, more tagging, and more referrals to your website. For WordPress, one that's useful is uh, the dashboard. It tells you how many people are on your blog, making comments, and so you can track your activity on the blog site. For qualitative, kind of just, besides just seeing, yes, people are coming on and they're leaving comments, but you can also measure it by saying how much, and this is telling you how much awareness you're generating by the things that people are leaving. Uh, a lot of people will visit, but not many people will leave a comment. So it's really um, a good measure when you see a lot of comments because that person thought enough to leave um, their name and also what they thought about it because they want someone to see it. So it's encouraged to try to communicate with people who leave comments to encourage people to come back and see. And then last, for each of the three, there are uh, developer apps or different types of metrics already available, but they are a bit technical in nature, and we recommend that you speak to uh, your webmaster or developing team to get assistance on how to install those because you need to have knowledge of coding. And here are just some screenshots of the different things we're talking about. So for Facebook, this is their app. And you can see here it shows how many users there are, how many fans. We talked about starting, but what about maintenance? With the three that we've recommended here, these are fairly user friendly. These are fairly easy to start and easy to maintain. But we recommend for Facebook to keep the personal angle. Michelle started something, so it, it's going to help if other members of Sims also become Facebook, have Facebook accounts and actually have Facebook friends. They can spread the word. And to add more friends, to post links to Sims as well. Refer to them when possible, when appropriate. As far as YouTube, adding very videos periodically is going to help keep things fresh, keep people interested. Sims should always alert those who are into, who are interviewed that their video is on. They're basically on TV, so they can tell their friends and neighbors. As far as uh, WordPress, absolutely, blogging is going to be one of the basic things that every member of Sims is going to need to try to do if possible, as many as possible. And to keep a conversation going, to keep a dialogue going versus a monologue. One person, one company should be made up of many people. An organization is made up of people. And those people should be having conversations. As far as the timeline of action steps, immediately, of course, we should establish, Sim, Sim should establish a baseline and metrics. We describe those. Christina's talked about those. They're described in the paper. It's a good paper. It's a good read. Within three months, social, new social media may need to be added more sites. These are, this is a good first triple strike. You know, YouTube, Facebook, and, and WordPress are a good three starts, but more may need to be added as growth occurs. Within the six months, there should be incentives for members or even new potential members to join Sims and to follow the plan. So in summary, keep the website and blog up to date, maintain a uniform presence, keep the YouTube drawing, expect underscore expect Sims members to blog, tweet, etc. Doing all this will result in a synergy that will make you more powerful than individual elements of the media law. I'd like to thank you for your time today and if you have any questions we'll be happy to